Following Reillusion's initial tutorials on the new Headshot plugin, this tutorial will provide a more in-depth look at texturing in Headshot Auto mode. So, selecting the Auto button from the Headshot interface, I can drag in or open a photo from Explorer, and this opens the Generate Character panel, which allows you to select a preset body type, as well as a preset skin approach for the head texture which will be blended with the original photo. It takes about a minute to process, so I've speeded this up here, but you can see that Auto Mode produces a new head on the chosen body, and it also produces a hair model if the subject in the photo has hair. Now, these models are standard Character Creator 3 avatars, so they're ready to animate, but you'll notice that the head model is quite a general shape, with quite low resolution face textures. And in the case of long haired models like this, the hair shape itself can end in a straight edge, which you can easily fix by editing the opacity map in an external editor such as Photoshop. And generally speaking, models created in auto mode are best for long camera shots, crowd scenes and arc viz rather than close up facial animation. But since the primary limitation of models produced with auto mode is really only texture resolution, experienced artists can still use them as a starting point for producing higher quality models using manual compositing as well as sculpting techniques if they wish. So now I'm creating another auto model, this time a male and apart from selecting the male body type, again all I've done is load a single front face photo into Headshot. And generally speaking, this produces decent models with no user intervention at all. And despite the texture limitation of Headshot auto-generated models, from a pipeline point of view, it's worth considering just how long it would take a 3D artist to produce a working model of this quality using conventional techniques, whether by manual modeling and texturing, or from scan conversion. So far, I've only shown Auto Mode's most basic functionality, which is to make heads automatically from photos. But Auto Mode also gives you access to the same morphing as well as texture adjustment tools, which are available in Pro Mode and you can use texture adjustment to change various aspects of the generated head's materials. I'll be going into detail on morphing and texture adjustment when I cover Pro functionality later. However, there are a couple of obvious instances where using texture adjustment can be used to quickly improve auto-generated models. The first is simply to change eye color. Here you can see that the generated model's eye color does not match the photo. And whilst you can go into the character's modified material panel to change the texture and texture settings, as you would with standard CC3 avatars, you can also use the eye color presets on the Headshot UI to quickly get a closer match. And whilst eye color makes a big difference in terms of whether a model looks like the subject in the original photo, it's also important to ensure that the face texture from the original photo is blended as well as possible with the generic mapping around it. So this time, I'm making a model where the original photo has very contrasting lighting, with strong highlights on the frontal parts of the face. And because of the lighting contrast, you can see that the skin colour produced around the facial texture isn't a good match at all. Now, there are a number of ways to address this with Headshot. Scrolling down the Headshot interface, immediately below eye colour, you can see a number of skin presets. This provides additional preset options for masking and blending, on top of those available in the Generate Character panel. Next, there's a Skin Color Selector, and changing the value here will adjust all of the textures which surround the face, including the skull and all body textures. But instead of changing the skin color in this case, since it will be better to balance the color here via the face itself, I'll use some masking and blending. Headshot comes with a range of procedural textures which can be mixed together to provide different skin types as well as basic hair and beard mapping options. And when you select a skin preset from the preset icons or from the dropdowns, the base head normal, diffuse and roughness maps are updated here. Headshot also comes with a range of masking approaches for the face, which includes the outer boundary of the face as well as the nose and mouth, and for different degrees of eyelid masking. And these two thumbnails show the state of the current mask on the right, and on the left here the face texture which will be blended using the mask with the base textures on the row above. So the workflow is simply to select a combination of textures and maps, and then press the update texture button below to produce the mapping on the model. There are lots of different masking options available, 
and you can also make custom masks if you wish. But for now, I've selected the most basic options just to see how they look. So, updating the skin texture recombines the original photo with the masking, as well as any skin presets which you may have selected. And whilst this blend can still be improved, after just a couple of mouse clicks, it's already better than before. I'll make one more texture change to this model, since it's a good example of where the contrast from the lighting in the original photo will inevitably conflict with virtual lighting in many of the scenarios in which the model might be used. To reduce the contrast, I'll first choose the rough skin base texture, which will help blend with the noise on the face, as well as a de-lighting mask, which blends in more of the base texture on a more diffuse basis. And it's well worth exploring the various texture and masking options available, as well as making your own custom textures and masks with an external image editor because results can always be improved. But to finish off, I'll make one last model using auto mode, and it's worth pointing out that this photo creates a better model by default than the previous one. This is because the photo is more evenly lit and taken face on, whereas in the previous photo the lighting was higher contrast and the subject's face was slightly tilted down. Basically for headshot, the better the photo, the better the model. And whilst auto mode should be considered as a way to quickly produce models which are best suited for long camera shots, as a starting point for making more refined models using artistic approaches, or for models for crowd scenes, which you can produce easily in volume using the batch generate function at the bottom of the headshot interface, pro mode can go much further. And looking a bit deeper into headshot pro will be the subject of the next video. Thanks for watching.